Hello, everybody. It looks like we've come to the end of another week. Today we are in Revelation chapter 20, so I hope you have your Bible and your journal to take notes in. We've covered a lot of material, a lot of information. This has been helpful to you, and we've got a lot to cover today. But let me just say first that uh, thank you. I, I appreciate you uh, joining me every day for these video devotions. I really do. I enjoy doing them, and I hope they're a blessing to you. Please communicate with us and let us know what God's doing in your life, how these are helping you. I look forward to hearing from you. That will encourage me. Um, and uh, I also want to encourage you to worship with us this Sunday, either online or in person. I'll be wrapping up the series. I've been preaching from the book of 1 John on the evidence of salvation, the evidence of salvation. Um, and uh, so I hope you'll join us for that. Um, so Revelation chapter 20, wow, where to start? There is a lot, <laughs> there's a lot in this uh, chapter. Satan's defeat, the thousand year reign, the great white throne judgment, um, um, all, of, all of that. And here's what I want to say as, a, as we start. I think as we deal with this chapter, and really for any of Revelation, but in particular this chapter, all of us need to have some humility. Uh, anybody who insists that everything they think about Revelation is right is crazy. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say it that way. But we all need a little bit of humility um, when it comes to interpreting this book and show some grace because we're not all going to agree on how to interpret all of it. I, think, I just think that's a really good idea. The outline of chapter 20 I want to do that and then make some points, uh, begins with Satan, the great dragon, being bound for a thousand years, and uh, then you know the millennium, which is not mentioned in the book, but it's a, uh, it's a, an, a, um, a Latin word for thousand. And then you have the, the Christian martyrs who are with Jesus for that thousand year period. At the end of the thousand years, uh, Satan is um, is is loosed and the nations under his influence oppose God and God's people. Uh, and then Satan loses that battle and is cast into the lake of fire and the great white throne judgment takes place. That's the outline of chapter 20. Um, before we jump into some specific verses, let me give you an overview of, of how Revelation has been interpreted in, in Christian history and church history. Um from the very beginning, there have been two primary approaches. One is called premillennialism, or today we would refer to it as, as historic premillennialism, and the other is amillennialism. Historic premillennialism says that Revelation was written to the first century Christians, but it also, and, and then it covers all of church history, all of human history between the two comings of Christ. And toward the end, there will be more tribulation, not necessarily an exact seven-year tribulation period, but there will be hard times toward the end, and then Jesus will come. Uh, and after the second coming of Jesus, there is a thousand-year rule upon earth called the millennium. And then following that, the great white throne judgment. Amillennialism is very similar in that it believes this was written primarily to the first century believers, with application to to all of us because this is how the world is going to be between the two comings of Christ. And it will get worse. There will be more tribulation toward the end. And then Jesus comes back. But there's not a thousand year millennium. The thousand years does not refer to a literal rule of a thousand years on earth. It refers to something else. And, uh, and so Jesus comes back and there is then the judgment. Now what many of you have heard in your lifetime is called dispensationalism is an offshoot of historic premillennialism. Dispensationalism is the belief that just about all of Revelation is dealing with the future, not Rome, but with the future, and a very specific seven-year tribulation when all of this happens. And there's a rapture of the church before that seven-year tribulation period begins. And then during that seven years, all of this stuff happens. At the end of that seven years, Jesus comes and, there's the, and, and, and so on, and the resurrection takes place, and there's a thousand-year rule on earth, and then the, the great white throne judgment. So what, what dispensationalism adds primarily is the idea of a specific seven-year tribulation and a rapture of the church. Now, a lot of the popular preachers in America that we all like and respect, that's where they fall. Most Bible scholars in our conservative seminaries do not believe that. In fact, in church history... A pre-tribulation rapture is not mentioned anywhere in any church writing until the 1800s. 
In other words, for the first 1,800 years of the church's existence, nobody believed or taught a pre-tribulation rapture. That, that started being taught in the 1800s in England, became popular in America in the first half of the 1900s when the most popular Bible in America was the Schofield Bible, the King James translation, of the, and it was the Schofield Bible. And in his study notes, he had dispensationalism in all of his study notes, his footnotes, pre-tribulation rapture. And that became popular among conservative evangelical Christians. And that's, what, that's how that kind of took off. Uh, uh, but most Christians throughout the centuries believed either historic premillennialism or amillennialism. In other words, that this is written to the believers who were being persecuted by the Romans. There would be additional tribulation suffering toward the end, but not an exact time period. And this wasn't all written about that. And then Jesus would come. The difference between the what was believed for 1,800 years is, is there a literal thousand-year rule on earth or not? And, you, and, and, I, and I can go either way on that. Now, personally, I lean more on millennialism, but I'm torn back and forth between those two. Uh, for me, as I read the scripture, uh, there is, for, for me personally, I find absolutely no evidence in the Bible of a pre-tribulation rapture. I just don't. Uh, and, and you haven't seen that mentioned anywhere in Revelation. Nowhere. The only place that they allude to it, uh, people who believe that, is in chapter 4 when John was caught up to heaven to have these visions after seeing Jesus and getting Jesus' message for the seven churches. And they, and they say, well, when John was caught up to heaven, that's a picture of the rapture. Well, you, no, that's just forcing what you believe onto that text because that text says nothing like that. So anyhow, hope that gives you some background. But again, grace, and uh, we can disagree with each other, but... Uh, I want you to know what, for 1,800 years, the church church believed. So, for some of you, I know this will be new. For some of you, it may be upsetting. Some of you may be even shocking. But uh, don't worry about it, because we all win if we're followers of Christ. Now, a couple of things in this chapter that I really want us to talk about that are such a blessing. The desti- Let's talk about the destiny of humanity for a moment. Because uh, chapter 20 lays that out so vividly. In chapter 20, look at verses 11 and 12. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, uh, from whose presence the earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. The destiny of humanity is the judgment seat of God. And he says that the dead, great and small, Powerful and weak, important and non-important are all going to be there. No exemptions, no exceptions. Every human being will stand before the judgment seat of God. That's the destiny of humanity. Uh, No absentees at all. Back in, uh, uh, well, that's what, in, in verse 13 even as that the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged. Um, it doesn't matter where you die or how you die. You're going to be judged. And if you die before the second coming and you're already in Hades or you're already in hell, guess what? You're still going to stand before the judgment seat of God. That's the destiny of humanity is to, is to be judged by God. And then if you're not a follower of Christ after the judgment, the lake of fire. Back in chapter 19, verses 20 and 21, the beast and uh, the false prophet, the Roman emperors, and those who, who propagated the emperor worship were thrown into the lake of fire. In chapter 20, verse 10, Satan, the great dragon, the devil, is thrown into the lake of fire. In verse 14 of chapter 20, death and Hades, death, death and hell, if you will, are thrown into the lake of fire. And now look at verse 15. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So every person who stands before the judgment throne of Christ, who is not a follower of Christ and their name is not in the book of life, they're going to be in the same lake of fire where hell is thrown, where Satan is thrown, where the demons are thrown, where the evil Roman emperors are thrown, where all false religions are. That's the destiny of humanity apart from Jesus Christ. It's a horrible, horrible destiny. But hey, If you've been washed in the blood, if you have Jesus as your Savior, that's not your destiny. 
Your destiny is what we're going to look at next Monday and Tuesday in chapters 21 and 22. And I hope you'll join me to look at what your destiny is. By the way, if you have some friends, you have some relatives, you have some co-workers who are not followers of Jesus, what we just talked about in chapter 20, that's their destiny. So you need to be praying for them. You need to be inviting them to church. You need to come out from this American culture and be different and make the bride of Christ like we talked about yesterday look beautiful because of how you live so that you can be an effective witness to those who are destined for hell unless they give their lives to Jesus. See, how you live and what you do matters. But hey, Monday and Tuesday, we'll talk about your destiny if you're a follower of Christ. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Join us for church. Join us for worship in person or online this Sunday, the last sermon in the series, The Evidence of Salvation. God bless you.